Okay, so when we were talking about sine and cosine graphs, the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, that we need to find was the main important thing we need to find was our amplitude and our period, right? Our new period. Well, for our tangent and our cotangent, we obviously don't have an amplitude, so we're not going to have to worry about finding the amplitude. But what we're going to want to be concerned with is again what our period is, and again what um, our period and our endpoints of our graph. So. First of all, the new thing that we need to remember is a period is rather than going to be 2 pi over b, it's now going to be pi over b. Okay? So what that means is the distance that's going to take for our um, graph to complete one cycle is now going to be pi over b. So remember, b is always going to be your uh, number that's in front of your x. So in this term, it's going to be pi over 3. All right? And now we need to figure out what are our endpoints. Now, before, if you guys remember on like a sine and a cosine graph, we remember the endpoints of one period could be like 0 and 2 pi. And what we did is we took whatever was inside our function and set them equal to 0 and 2 pi. Well, when you guys look at the graphs, remember I told you guys knowing what the parent graph looks like? Well, the endpoints of one period in a tangent graph is negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what I'm going to do now is set whatever's inside my function equal to negative pi over 2 and equal to pi over 2 so therefore I can see where my new where my new asymptotes are going to be. So I'll just write you know kind of endpoints. So what you do is your original endpoints are negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. You set whatever's inside your function equal to those two endpoints. So I have 3x is equal to negative pi over 2, and I have 3x is equal to pi over 2. Um, we're going to be finding out where our new uh, asymptotes are going to be, because what this does is this is going to um, kind of change like our period like this is our new period so it's going to change the distance where our new where our asymptotes are if you so if we can now just solve for x what x is going to tell us see our original our asymptotes are at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 but that was when it was for like this graph is for y equals tangent of x right but now we're graphing y equals tangent of 3x so we need to figure out what is that 3x going to do to our graph so I say 3x equals pi over 2, divide by 3, right? And to get rid of, to have a double fraction, <coughs> multiply by the reciprocal. Right? That's going to cancel out. So here I'm going to be left with x equals a negative pi over 6, and x equals pi over 6. Okay, what I did is I have pi over 2 divided by 3. Do you understand why, how I got that? Yeah. I divided 3 on both sides. Yeah. So then, to get rid of it, oh, you yeah. can say multiply by the reciprocal. So that's like 3 over 1. Multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 1 third. You have to multiply at the top and the bottom. So that cancels out. So then you have negative pi over 2 times 1 third is a negative pi over 6. All right? So now, we can simply just graph this. Now we know, again, the distance from our two points is pi over 3. So we're going to check that. So I'm going to set my graph here. Okay, so does everybody see what mathematically what I've done so far? Because this is really what you need to do for every tangent graph. You find your period, which you just take your pi divided by your b, which in this case was 3. Then you just take whatever your function was and set it to your original two endpoints. Then what that does is that gives me two new endpoints. which are now negative pi over 6 and pi over 6. Okay? So that is now where my new asymptotes are. So you can just draw a nice little dotted line. All right? Now, let's just double check, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, from, let's just double check to make sure we did our work right. The distance from here, 
What is the distance from here to here? Yeah, but the positive, the positive distance is what? Pi over 6, right? And the distance from here to here is what? Pi over 6. So pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is? Pi over 3. How many pi's over 3? 2 pi's over 3, which reduces down to what? I'm sorry, 2 pi's over 6, right? Which reduces down to? Pi over 3, which our period is? Pi over 3. So our work is correct, right? You guys see how that, that helps? That's your period, right? Now, um, the next thing, if you remember, it always says to graph another period. So if this is pi over 6, to find my next one, just add pi over 3 again. So pi over 6 plus pi over 3. Um, so then you're going to have multiply by this by 2 over 2. So now you're going to have, what, 3 pi over 6, right? Which is 1 half, or pi over 2. So then I just make another dot. So do you guys see how I can find more periods? If you just keep on adding pi over 3, so you just, add your period just keep on adding your periods to find, you know, to get the next one. And I didn't really separate that really well, but that obviously it's not evenly spaced. So just really one half is like right there. So that is um, 3 pi over 6, or which is pi over 2. Now, the next thing is to find our points, all right? Um, and really, just for time purposes, I'm not going to go through finding your points. But really, all you guys need to do is you need to understand it's going to look like this. If there's no reflections or anything like that, your graph is simply going to go through these two points. So it's just going to cross here this point. And it's going to approach that asymptote and approach that asymptote. Now, if, zero, if it crosses at 0, 0, where do you think it's going to cross over here? We have to add what? A period. A period. So it's just this one is going to cross at pi over 3. So that's how I know where to find my new intercept. Does that make sense? Everything's a period across. Remember your period, the distance it takes. Do you, do you understand this asymptote? To get the next asymptote, you add pi over 3. Well, it's the same thing. These are all equal. This is like a carbon copy of each other. Okay, so your first is your first um, intercept always going to be zero, zero, or for this graph, yes, for your tangent graph, that is the that's what the parent function looks like. So yes, your parent graph always crosses at zero, comma zero. Okay. So, but it all depends on what you know translations we have, what transformation we do to the graph. But your parent graph starts at zero, zero. So to find my next period, I just add pi over three. So then this one. is going to look the same. Now, I will talk a little bit about, um, not in this video, but about being able to determine what points are. Because, like I said, there might be some numbers in front of there that to find some alternate points. But really, guys, if you can find your intercept and then know it's going to approach your two asymptotes, that is a, a good first step to get started with that. All right? So we'll talk more about finding points a little bit later. But the main important thing, find your period, find your new endpoints, and graph two periods. Well, once you get better at it, it gets a lot quicker. But does that kind of make sense?